I mean, your your times of depression were very, mm-hmm. very bad. Um, would you, would you yeah. have called yourself clinically depressed or? I think so. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And and that leads one into the darkest periods of life, and mm-hmm. we we uh, don't think rationally like we used to how low i mean what did that look like for you and your Mm -hmm. in your times of depression um for me i mean i had countless suicidal thoughts i mean wanted to kill myself just felt so hopeless like nothing's going to change so that's why i had those thoughts and then at one point i started cutting myself like on my leg that um just occurred a couple of times Mm -hmm. it it it's hard to explain, but it was it like a way to reach the emotions, even though it hurt physically, it uh-huh. just felt better. Hey everyone, Pastor Tom here, 24 Today Podcast. Appreciate you joining me again and listening in. I've got another great guest for you today, and yet another topic that is going to be very helpful for you. And I know this because it, I know it's helpful for me. Um, so I know it's it's got to be of interest to other people, and as I've said before, um, this is these podcasts are ways that I learn for myself, and then I pass it along to you. This episode title is called "I Loved Food More Than God." Now how about that for a title? And doesn't that relate to all of us at some level at some point it certainly does me and my guest today is Dana Remzovsky and she has a lot of experience as we all do but she has a lot of experience with this topic and has written about it Um, she blogs about it and she is going to help us out today by the way her website you need to go to is hopelessly devoted to food.com just like it sounds just like it's spelled hopelessly devoted to food.com Dana welcome to the podcast today thank you so much for having me great to have you um, it's is my privilege to have you Dana because uh, you are very honest and open about a subject that I struggle with and about a subject that many who are listening struggle with. Dana describes herself as a Jesus lover, an encourager, and an author. And she says on her uh, blog, and I know uh, she and I have talked before uh, about this, she has struggled with emotional eating for decades, as she words it. And uh, she has lost and regained hundreds of pounds over the years and I say to that so have I (laughs) Uh, but Dana thanks again Um, before we talk about this episode which by the way is titled after directly after a blog that you wrote Dana and that blog was called I loved food more than God and that popped out to me so much that that's you know why I wanted to talk to you specifically about this but before we get to that subject let's start on a lighter way and I'm going to ask you what your favorite TV show was growing up that would be the Brady Bunch the Brady Bunch 70s yes and just it was funny had some heartwarming parts to it as well and just loved it when the Brady kids Sing and dance, and absolutely, and did show. yeah, did that whole thing, and uh, <laughs> their um, Alice, the, yeah, and the Love dog. Her. What was the dog's name? Tiger, I think. Oh, that's right, Tiger. Tiger. Yes, uh, can't believe I know <laughs> that or think of that, but um, yes, uh, Dana, what do you do for a living? Well, right now I take care of my mom full time. She's elderly and has some health problems. So I've been doing that for a few years. Prior to that, I did work as a medical assistant for many years. Okay. Right now. Right now. Yeah, you are a full time (laughs) caregiver. And what a blessing that is 
for you to be able to do that for your mom and for you to actually be really the 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 hands and the arms of God to her and the voice of God and that's awesome that you can do that. Um tell me a little bit about your family, Dana. Well, I'm I'm single. Um I don't have any children, two cats. Um youngest of five kids. We're okay. originally from New Jersey. Um okay. live in Michigan now. I've been here okay. for many years. What are your them, so. what are your cats' names? Mr. Shovels and Ava. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Their mother and son, they're both polydactyl, so they have extra time. Oh, we've talked about this before. Things. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that. And that's yeah. a term I didn't didn't know, didn't even realize. Polydactyl. <laughs> Dactyl. Yeah. <laughs> and I think I've asked you this before, but I can't remember what the answer was. How many toes do they <laughs> do they have? <laughs> <laughs> Mom has twenty two. Oh my goodness. And Mr. I think he has 18. <laughs> I think they're supposed to have 14, four in each. And I'm just I trying think. to, I'll have to, I'll have to Google this because I'm trying to figure <laughs> out how that looks. <laughs> and is it, I mean, would the average person look at these cats and say, my, you have a lot of toes or, I mean, is it, I mean, is it pretty yeah. obvious? <laughs> no, especially in front. Yeah. It's Ava, she has kind of like thumbs. She talks about the Oh, oh my goodness! It's okay, they're, they're fun. They're they're very sweet. So, Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> um, so Dana, uh, let's talk about this subject. That um, again, you you uh, listeners, you can go to her website and you can find mm -hmm. this particular blog post uh, among others. But this one blog post is called "I Loved Food More." than God. Uh, mm -hmm. Dana, was there a specific moment or time that that became really apparent to you in your life that, that you just had sort of a moment or a day in which you said, man, this has got to stop because my love for food is actually more than my love for God? Mm -hmm. There was. I was just so tired of struggling and not being able to be successful and lose or losing weight or overcoming this emotional eating problem. And I, there was a point in time I asked God, I said, why do I keep going to food for help instead of you? And he spoke to my heart immediately and said, because you love food more than me. Mm. That was a, a and, huge shock. You know, yeah. Uh, because Dana, by definition, um, we call that an idol. Yes. We, mm -hmm. um, and this is the, this is the thing that, um, God's people have struggled with really from day one and continue on struggling with it. And it's what, it's why it's listed in the 10 commandments because we all have this tendency to put, something else before God and it can be food or it could be a car or it could be money or it could be success or popularity or clothing or any number of things. Mm -hmm, but for right. you, it was food. Right. Yeah. For me, cause I have struggled with severe depression for many years. Mm -hmm. So for decades, food was my friend. It would get me through those tough times when I had suicidal thoughts or didn't want to live or just was so depressed. I, you know, it, it just mm -hmm. helped me get through the day. So decades. So this, yeah. when would this have started? Like when you were a young girl? Yeah, about eight years old when mm -hmm. we moved here. I think it was something that I couldn't control, you know, leave, leaving all my friends and family. And so it was like, I turned to food as my, yeah, my friend. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You've got that strong emotion of, of loss in your mm -hmm. life, losing mm -hmm. friends, losing the things that you know. And, and so you found it very easy then to start eating, to try to, to take care of, of those feelings. 
Right. Um, did your, did anyone notice that in your life? Like parents or teachers or anyone say, Hey, this might be something you need to think about. Um, from time to time, someone would say something or, you know, I've been told, well, you have a pretty face, you know, and mm -hmm. you should lose weight and things like that. But, you know, I've tried, had tried countless diets and so many things and was unsuccessful. So would, you know, feel hopeless on many, mm -hmm. many occasions. So you were obviously a believer when, when you get this thought from God yeah. Uh, the, and the thought again was, Dana, your issue is that you love food more than you love me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and because you were a believer, that was pretty shocking because all of us, yeah. if we believe in God, we all hear these uh, messages and, and these thoughts that you got. You can't put anything before God. And we all assume that we don't do that. God is first right. in our life. Mm -hmm. And right. then the problem is, though, that every single one of us struggle with that. Every single one of us struggle with idolatry, putting something before God. That's just such a mm -hmm. common struggle and most of us don't admit it and most of us maybe we haven't identified it as clearly as you but uh would you say that um all weight issues in terms of overeating have to do with emotions or is that too much is that too simplified I know. Yeah, it's, I yeah. have a feeling it's too simplified. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think for everybody. I think that may, probably women struggle with that more because we're more emotional. Um, I think sometimes it can just be a habit, you know, um, overeating or eating unhealthy food. I don't think it's always an emotional relationship okay. with food like it was for me. Mm -hmm. But I think it's more common than you might realize or yeah. it's not really talked about or addressed. You it know, isn't. It's just, Go on a diet and exercise, you lose weight. It's not that difficult. You know, people don't haven't struggled with it. So it's yeah. Right, but so it's more than portion control. It's, right, right. For me, yeah, it was an actual relationship I had with food. Yeah, that emotional connection. Because you can oh, deal with that portion control on a diet. Yes. I mean it yeah. it's hard, but you can deal with that and then mm -hmm. Though the if you haven't dealt with emotional struggles and how to deal with that properly, then at some point that is going to win. I mean, if you you can deal with the you can deal with the portion control successfully, but at some point emotion that's such a strong uh, bully, I guess, in our life. Emotions aren't bad. But but if right. we're not controlling them right, that thing's going to win, regardless of portion control. You can win portion control for a long time, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. um, then emotion comes along. And hmm. so were there were there certain emotions for you, or certain reasons that a lot? Okay, certain yeah, reasons I, that emotion like. <clears throat> would be strong in you? What were some of those things? Well, um, like I mentioned, depression, that was the main thing. And then I even had suicidal thoughts. So it's like food would give me a temporary high, I guess you would say. And oh, yeah. Feel better. And it does. Um, food food mm -hmm. does. Food does yeah. give us a high and it gives us temporarily this feeling like um, it's going to be okay. I feel better now. Right. I'm going to get through this. But, right, right. but of course, you know, we all know that that only lasts for a while. And then, then we start to, then we feel worse for another reason, you know, because now yeah. we've, now we're gaining more weight and now, you know, we yeah. get into this. So I interrupted you though. So depression oh. would be a, would be a reason, um, uh, yeah. that strong emotion. I mean, just so many, I mean, sadness, um, 
when I was upset, stressed, um, angry, and even happy to celebrate use food to celebrate. So it really abroad. <laughs> foods <laughs> everywhere. Know, foods at yeah. foods so, at all the yeah, meetings. Foods yeah. Foods at church. Foods. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, it's not that it's a bad thing, but food is just such a part of our life that this is one issue that if you struggle with it, it's pretty hard to get away from it. It is. It is. And we, like you said, we need it to live. It was if I had a problem with something else, yeah. you know, maybe there's something that's like, well, I don't need that. That's harming me, but I need food yeah. and like too much unhealthy food mm -hmm. is harming, harming me. Yeah, if uh -huh. if uh if you struggle with alcoholism, you don't mm -hmm. you certainly don't want to go to a bar. Mhm. Mm mm -hmm. But right. um but again, food and again, alcohol's everywhere too. I mean, alcohol's in the stores and so forth, but but there are places where it would be obvious that you stay away from, but it's it's extra hard though if your struggle is food because food is on every street practically and mm -hmm. every venue that we go to in life, it's there and it's advertised and it's mm -hmm. on TV and magazines everywhere we go. <laughs> it's food, food, food. So if, right. if you're struggling with an emotion, then and emotions are so strong. If you're struggling with that, it's uh, pretty easy, and I certainly understand why. Then you just say, well, I'm going to grab this bag of chips. And you and I have talked before, so I know chips is <laughs> the one thing, uh, one of those things for you. Right, right, yeah. Um, and all of us have a thing. It's not necessarily my thing, mm -hmm. but, um, <laughs> but, you know, peanut M&Ms, you know, for me, so. Oh yeah. That's yeah. <laughs> um, by the way, uh, I am Pastor Tom. If you're if uh, you're new to this podcast or, or new to me, I'm Pastor Tom, and you can find out more about me. Uh, you can Google Tom Weitzel, W H I T E S E L, and uh, you can find me on YouTube. I have a YouTube channel with all kinds of interviews like this one and others, and different teachings that I have and give out of Scripture. Uh, so I, you know, would love it if you go to that, subscribe, um, 24today.org is my blog. That's 24today.org. You can go there. You can find me on Facebook at 24 Today Facebook. I have encouraging videos and words and scriptures that, uh, I try to update every single day just to give you a moment of smile, a moment of break and, and just to be encouraged. So that's some about me. But my guest today is Dana Remzovsky and her last name is R-E-M-I-S-O-V-S-K-Y. And uh, you can find her at hopelesslydevotedtofood.com. That's hopelesslydevotedtofood.com. So if you want a sympathetic voice, if you want an encouraging voice on this issue, if you want to be able to talk to someone who's been where you're at, uh, if you want to be able to ask questions, if you're looking for someone to speak to your group of people, um, then Dana is certainly a great resource for you to be able to go to and find help. And you can read her blogs and different things that she's written because it's really going to speak directly into your life uh, in these areas that, that you are dealing with. Um, Dana, it's interesting to me, I'm a pastor, it's interesting to me that uh, if this is an idol, which it is, being that it's a spiritual problem, which it can be, mm -hmm. it's interesting that we don't ever talk about it that way. I mean, we don't ever talk about, hey, if you have a problem with food, it could be a spiritual problem. It doesn't have to be. But it could be, and it could yeah. be that the enemy, Satan, is actually actively trying to cause you to lose in this area of life, and it's a spiritual warfare thing, that Satan is actually 
um, using those tempting areas and things in, in the way of food to actually bring you down spiritually. Had you ever even heard of that before? You're, you you kind of came to this understanding with God that, that it could be a spiritual problem? Well, I remember the scripture. I can't remember the exact verse, but it talks about being um, spiritually fit. It between being physically fit, like okay. it says, it's of some value, but it's more important to be yeah. spiritually right. healthy. Right. And so I was aware of that scripture and mm. and of the enemy, but that's very true that um, he would love just to keep us um, in bondage and just um, just overwhelmed by our own problems that we're not able to reach out and to share, you know, the gospel with others. And he just wants to keep you, know, you defeated. To, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So. We never, I don't know, we just don't, don't, I guess I've never really in a message or anything say publicly like this could be a spiritual issue for you and mm -hmm. therefore it's something that you need to pray about in your life. You need to include mm -hmm. that if in your daily prayers that God help me this day to be in control, help Help me to not put this before you. Help me with the temptations. Help me to uh, stay away or just steer clear of things that you know that are going to be tempting. Um, we mm -hmm. don't think about that. We don't really pray that way. I assume. Do you pray now? Is that part of your thought process mm -hmm. of God? Yeah. It had been in in the past before I, you know, kind of received kind of deliverance from this. Uh, struggle and I did pray like God help me you know because I had been such a failure for decades so and now I still pray I ask God specifically for like recipe ideas because I'm starting I'm trying to like decrease my carbs and different things so I do pray and like pray for recipes <laughs> things like mm. that so I do ask him to help me specifically with what I eat you mm -hmm. know speaking of recipes that would be a great thing for your your website I don't know if you do that but mm -hmm. Uh, that would be yeah, uh, you could put some some uh, right recipe Idea. sections whatever um, yeah. so this evidently was something that you prayed for and then it just didn't go away right I mean you prayed yeah. for it and it mm -hmm. didn't why why do you think you're praying for this? Not like we are, I mean, all of us, I mean, all the things I can think of that I prayed for and I still struggle with. Yes, I understand that, but I'm just asking you yeah. because some ask, I've prayed about this for a long time too, Dana, and I'm not getting anywhere. So right. what's, what's the difference? For me, I feel like looking back, I was waiting on God and it was basically the ball was in my court because it was, I wasn't spending time with God. I wasn't growing spiritually, okay. like getting fit spiritually. Uh -huh. And I was focusing the physical and emotional instead of the spiritual. So I think that was with me, that was the problem. <laughs> so it's, it's one thing to pray, but it's, but then there are, there are practical things that we need to be doing. I mean, we can, we can pray, Oh God, help me to be closer to my family. But if we never mm -hmm. hang out around our family, <laughs> right, right. So, we have to, we always have to include some positive action in our life to go along with our prayers, I guess is what I'm saying. I mean, there's something that God wants us to do also, or to change priorities, thinking, whatever, that goes along with the prayer. Right. Um, so for you, it was, I need to spend more time mm -hmm. with this one that I'm asking help for because mm -hmm. because it is in getting closer to God that um, his strength then will will come into my life in this area so it's, it's not that God it, it's really the answer is is really God isn't it? the answer is the answer is Jesus it's getting closer to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And when we get closer to him and his power, 
mm-hmm. then that power for whatever we're dealing with then can be applied to our life. Right, right. right. I think of the scripture that says, seek ye first the kingdom of God yeah. and his righteousness. All these things will be added unto thee. And yeah. that's what I felt because I was told for years and years, you got to, you know, spend that time with God alone every day and uh-huh. have that emotional time. And I was never consistent. In it. And then when I finally decided this is a priority, I was tired of kind of having a roller coaster um, mm. ride as, far as a relationship with God ups and downs. I was tired of that. I'm like, I need to do this. Then it was like the physical and emotional point. I just um, gained like um, like a buoyancy or a stability that I never had before. So, in other words, if we ask God for help with our food problem, um, it's the way God looks at it is, um, okay, I'm going to give you the knowledge of how to do that. I'm going to give you the knowledge of how to have a right diet plan. I'm going to give you the knowledge of how to think about this properly. So if we're praying for knowledge, which we definitely can get from God, that in and of itself isn't the answer. The diet plan or the company that we go through or right. um, whatever it might be, it it's not the knowledge. We're always wanting knowledge. We're always wanting the answer to the problem. Mm-hmm. But in reality, the answer is spelled Jesus, God. I mean, that's, that's, he's the answer. And so then as part of the answer, he will give you the knowledge that you need, but he'll also give you the Mm -hmm. power that you need. And if, if our problem is emotional, then he will replace that whatever is missing that's that's causing that emotion, right? Right, right. And as I put him first, that's what I've noticed. And even, like you said, um, like we have to do our part too. He'll give us direction, but we have to, if it's maybe like forgiveness or we have anger or bitterness, things like that, like letting that go and extending grace and mercy to people, things like that. Um, yeah, and renewing my mind too was a big thing to the word of God. You know, and reminding me of what he says about me and just declaring the word of God over my life has helped help me as well. Okay, so when you talk about getting closer to God, then that for you, what does that mean each day? For me, I spend my time with him in the morning. That just works out best okay. in my schedule. So just communicating with him, um, talking with him, sharing with him, praying for other people, reading his word thanking him for All right. many things in my life that he's okay. given him. So you have a moment in the morning mm-hmm. that that you just start to talk to God like he's your friend. You just start to talk to him. Yeah. And, yes. and then um, then you, you mentioned you spend time in his word, which means the Bible, so that you are there certain areas that you like to read or are there scriptures that that are really helpful for you or how do you do it that is, for you yeah um i do ha- i recently i have been using a devotional but there's so i mean psalms proverbs yeah. gospels there's a lot <laughs> yeah there are and there's there are tons and and, and, the, and it, it varies because it's like any relationship some seasons of my life one thing really is great and then um mm-hmm. Six months later, God kind of draws me to a different way to talk mm-hmm. to him and, and relationally. So they all change. And mm-hmm. whether it's devotional, like a book or, or something, um, what what devotional are you reading right now? Um, it's one by um, Susie Larson. Okay. It's, it's neat. It has a devotion for morning and evening. Ah. So that's something you I started to have a little bit of time okay. in, in the evening, too. Although I, you know, just like a relationship like with my mom, you know, I, you know, live with my mom. Sure. Take care of her, so I'm talking or throughout the day. So it's Absolutely. just like, with that, I talk to him okay. throughout the day as well. All right. <laughs> so what happens then, uh, you know, I'm speaking from personal experience, too, is that when when we take that moment to reconnect with God, God is the spiritual source. God is the, um, 
electricity, if you will, in our life. And so when we take the time to plug into that outlet, then God can, even in ways that we don't realize it, God can start to prepare our mind for the day. God can give us truth that we need. God can give us hope. God can give us assurance. God can give us all of these things just by plugging into the outlet. I mean, we may not even be asking for assurance. We not, may not be asking okay. for um, whatever it might be that we might end up struggling with emotionally later that day, but just plugging into God, God okay. is able then to give us even things we don't know that we're going to need. Yeah, absolutely. So you began to plug into God, and mm -hmm. how did that help you with, then let's say with your depression? Oh my goodness. At that time, I was on a medication, an antidepressant okay. for depression. Sure. And I, you know, it was probably several months that I was being consistent with my devotionals, and I was thinking of, should I go off it? I didn't know what to do. I was praying. Actually, I was like, God, should I, shouldn't I? I don't, I don't know. Mm -hmm. And so I went off. I said, you know, I'm just going to give it a week and see how I do. I can always go back on it. And then that was probably a couple years ago. And I, I just still had that, um, mm -hmm. that stability emotionally. And I never had to go back on it. Just, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And just making a blanket statement to everyone, um, you know, that we are not mm -hmm. encouraging for people to go off, you know, their medicines right. without doctors, right. you know, input. And, yeah. and also, uh, the truth is that, that, um, you know, so, sometimes there's that, um, chemical imbalance in people that, mm -hmm. you know, they need to remain on certain medicines mm -hmm. along with the help right. of God. Um, but, but right. for you, um, it actually mm -hmm. was, was something that God helped you um, and medically to be able to get off a, a certain kind of medicine. Um, yes. so what happened then? I mean, you got depressed after that. I mean, you still get depressed today, I'm sure. So what I is, mean, I, go ahead. Well, it's not like the low lows. Like, it oh, was. Okay. I mean, I get down from time to time, okay. but it's just little bumps instead of like, okay. <laughs> and you directly you know. attribute that to staying closer to God. To plugging oh, into God. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's like day and night. Yeah. Now, before, when, uh, I mean, your your times of depression were very, mm -hmm. very bad. Um, would, would you yeah. have called yourself clinically depressed or? I think so, okay. yes. Yeah. It's good. And... And that leads one into the darkest periods of life. And mm. we, we uh, don't think rationally like we used to, you know, when we're, when we're thinking uh, in, a, in a state of mind that's not in this dark, depressive time. So how low, I mean, what did that look like for you in your, mm. in your times of depression? Um, for me, I mean, I had countless suicidal thoughts. I mean, one of the kill myself just felt so hopeless, like nothing was going to change. So that's why I had those thoughts. And then at one point I started cutting myself like on my leg that, okay. um, just occurred a couple of times. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's hard to explain, but it was it like a way to release the emotions, even though it hurt physically, it uh -huh. felt better. But me. you're, but I mean, yes. Yeah. And it's a diversion of that pain mm -hmm. that you're feeling to something else. I mean, I, right. I understand that, um, I remember having headaches so bad that mm -hmm. at times that out of, I guess, anger and frustration. And again, it's, it's all, it's mm -hmm. irrational thinking when you get this way, but yeah. it's like, stop hurting head. And so mm -hmm. I can remember times where I just like, ah, stop hurting, which is the opposite mm -hmm. of what you want to do. You know, it's hit your head, but it's that it's that irrational way of thinking yeah. that of all the or you get mad at you get mad so you punch a wall. <laughs> you know that's not gonna help. I mean it's yeah. gonna end up hurting your hand and now you got two problems. Right. 
But yeah. so it's that it's that idea of it's it's somebody else who maybe struggles with a headache and they bite their lip. Mm. You know. Mm-hmm. And so yeah. that's kind of a form of what I guess of you are actually um you actually cut yourself and that and again it's that irrational way mm-hmm. of thinking but yeah. we we bring that up just to talk about how low one can get mm-hmm. uh when they feel bad about themselves because of of eating um mm-hmm. and so now i mean you are totally night and day from <laughs> the way you used to be and mm-hmm. and you really you attribute this to getting closer to God. You don't attribute it to a diet plan. No. Mm-hmm. You attribute it to getting more in tune with the answer. Right. God. Right. One hundred percent. Because I tried and failed so many times for decades. And until I like completely turned my life over to God and just was consistent spending time with him every day and having that close connection with him. Then it was interesting because it was several months after I started abiding with him regularly. And then I was thinking, I'm not going to food for comfort. Like, when did this happen? I don't know. And then I think, why am I not losing weight? And then it goes back to what you were saying about, you know, we have to do our part in being doing things, you know, like I had, I still have these habits, even though I wasn't going to food. I was still eating unhealthy foods and maybe not drinking enough water, exercising, things like that. But it was now it's like it was my choice. It wasn't like I was out of control. It it wasn't like I had that that relationship with food. You didn't (laughs) have that bully that's saying you feel bad, so you have no other choice but to go Mm -hmm. to the chips or whatever. Now now it's more on an even playing field and, and you're able to say, Nah, I think I, I think I can go to God for this one and yeah, amen. and get closer, spend another time with God. And mm-hmm. that will help with this emotion that I'm feeling. And, and then at some point later on in the day, you're out of that and you didn't even realize it, that you're out of that way of thinking mm-hmm. and, and you hadn't went to the, the chips or whatever else that, um, mm-hmm. so would you say um, your way then of determining um, whether or not you're doing well is not based on the scale? <laughs> Absolutely. I rarely weigh myself because in the past that, oh my goodness, if I didn't lose weight when I got on the scale or I didn't lose as much as I thought, it would just, I would just go down emotionally, mm-hmm. you know, into a depression and just say, forget, I'm not even going to try. So that di- the scale dictated my, how is, what kind of day I was going to have. So yeah, I rarely ever weigh myself and I can tell, you know, by my clothes, if I'm okay. losing weight, but it's, yeah, it's not, yeah, not important to me. <laughs> but what is important to you is, is feeling just right with God, feeling like there's a relationship, um, Mm -hmm. and feeling his peace and, and not, not the scale and Mm -hmm. not all the other, do you find yourself comparing yourself to others less? I do. And it's interesting because a few months ago, um, the women's ministry at our church, we had a, a study specifically on comparing. So that made me more aware of it. So I just like, you know, and their catchphrase was, there's no win in comparison. Mm-hmm. And so I bring it back, you know, nope, I'm not going to think on those things. Like it says in Philippians, whatever is true, right, noble, pure, and all that. And so, um, so that actually has helped me compare less, you know, to other, to how I love compared to other people. But and just reminding myself of, you know, Psalm 139, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I'm, you know, awesome in God's sight. And you know, and his creation, who he loves, so things like that. And the, the Bible says that the word of God is powerful, it's alive, it's active, so it's not just words on paper, so it actually can change your life, and it has mine. Do you follow a certain plan, then a certain diet plan, or? 
I don't, I just drink tons of water, which I, now I love water years ago. I did not like it at all, but um, just decreased um, my carb, um, you know, decreased sodium, sugar, that sort of thing. And I'm trying to implement more fruits and vegetables, which has been a challenge for me. I'm not, you know, a big salad fan or, but some, those, yeah, things like that. I'm not any, on any specific diet plan and those, you know, choices have, you know, made a positive impact in my life. This all must be so freeing for you though, to be able to not have to be um, judging your self-worth based on mm -hmm. the scale and right. what you see other people look like, um, mm -hmm. which is all the people, the models and things that we see on TV are yeah. not really the way life really is. I mean, they're, they're showing us mm -hmm. people and images to, to try to motivate us to buy something, but it's not necessarily yeah. how the average person really is. But, but instead of mm -hmm. having to compare yourself to all of that, it's more of, am I, am I healthy? Am I feeling, mm -hmm um okay health wise are my are my clothes fitting better um and do i feel close to god which can be tricky because there are times when we're we mm -hmm. are doing what we need to do and yet we're not feeling as close as we should be mm -hmm. just because or as, as we want to be just because that's the way life is sometimes. But, mm -hmm. but again, am I doing what I feel I need to do to stay close to God would be a better way to, to put that. So that's that those have become your mm -hmm. scales, your way of looking at life. And that has to be so freeing for you. Yes. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I can't even tell you. I'm just so thankful to God every day for that freedom, that Liberty. And I, talking about, you know, um, especially women being judged on what they look like. Yes. I think of that scripture. I think it's for Samuel 16, 7. And says that doesn't, man no. looks mm -hmm. the outward appearance, but God looks to the mm -hmm. heart. And I think it's important to remember this. You know, our heart is more important than what guys we wear. And women are unfairly judged in this area as compared to men. Mm -hmm. I mean, women. Right. It's just so unfair. One of the many things that's unfair I think about, you know, just what comes along with being a woman. I mean, there's just, mm -hmm. that's just, that's just not fair. It's not right that, mm -hmm. um, that it's different. Whereas a, a, a man can, can be overweight and it's just not looked at in the same way, unless you're extremely, extremely, extremely mm -hmm. obese. It's not looked at in the same way as it, as it is for a woman. And women are, are hard on women. I mean, women yeah. are just as hard as anyone else on women. And, and it's just a hard thing, you know, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm assuming for extra hard for a woman with this area of, of struggle. Mm -hmm. uh, so are there practical things now that you do to help you to, uh, I don't know that W's not have to stay to, to grab the chips to, I mean, what do you do now? Not buy chips as much or have them in the house or. Try. That's true. I try. <laughs> yeah. Right. You know, honestly, it's pretty rare that I have that feeling of going to food instead of God when I'm feeling down or stressed. Um, and another thing that was, I kind of realized this in recent weeks that when I am like stressed before I could, I would want to eat that would help me. And now it's like, I'm, when I'm upset, like I can't eat. So I just, I was just thankful to God. I'm like, thank you for that God too. Cause it's, so it's, it's, for me, it's kind of rare to think well, I'm going to go eat this and feel better. Cause it's just like, I have that stability, That's, you know, and that emotional buoyancy and you know, That's a miraculous like that. healing like, yeah. <laughs> in your life that God mm -hmm. has food and those emotions that's so strong and to, to now, uh, and you mentioned earlier, delivered, you, you were kind of 
you've been mm-hmm. delivered right. from that, which in spiritual terms, we what we mean is that God has um, taken us out of that bondage and put us on mm-hmm. a different ground to, uh, than what we, we were in quicksand. But now God, through right. him, has put us on more of a stable ground. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. that came through prayer for you, and it came from mm-hmm. a conscious decision for you to start getting closer and plugging into the one Mm -hmm. who has the power. Right, right, yeah. And it was just wanting to get closer to him, and it wasn't for the goal of losing weight. But, it, you know, I'll refer to that scripture again, seek first the kingdom, and all these things will be added. That, you know, as I sought him, you know, my that depression and emotional issues and emotional eating just kind of fell Mm -hmm. to the wayside, you know, as I put him first in my life. Now, I'm assuming that you would say that while you are not using a plan, it's certainly fine for people to use a plan Mm -hmm. along with going to God, you know, for help and getting closer Mm -hmm. to him devotionally and so forth. Right. Right. There are ways that that are helpful for certain people. It's just for you, Mm -hmm. you yeah, the the route that God has you doing is just strictly getting closer to Him, and then mm-hmm. He's providing um, the I guess the ability to mm-hmm. be able to approach food more normally. And yes, now on your on your blog, are, or uh, what are ways that people are interacting with you for help, and how can our listeners? You know, if they're relating to you, are, are there Bible studies? Are there things that they can come to you for or uh, ask questions to you, on, you know, on your blog? And what? how are ways that people who are feeling, you know, a connection with you now, now how can they get more help from you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would definitely say um, on my website, connect with me, write me. Okay. You know, um, even though I might, I mean, I pray a lot for other people. I may not know their names, but I pray a lot for people that are struggling with okay. this because I know how terrible it can be. But um, there's actually not a lot out there that I've found on emotional eating, especially um, like a Christian study yeah. or, or something like that. There's not a lot available out there. But I would just encourage people not to give up, to know with God that there is always hope. And um, know that I'm praying for you and that, you know, just don't give up. Yeah, I guess yeah. that in our human way of thinking, we, we think it's it's a matter of will and it's a matter of thinking differently. So if we just think differently mm-hmm. about food, then it'll solve the issue. And if we have a strong enough willpower, it'll solve it. But, but there's this mm-hmm. emotional component that right. uh, is really only solved through God. And also, we don't mm-hmm. forget the willpower thing because none of us have enough willpower <laughs> to, to be able to mm-hmm. overcome mm-hmm. stuff. We need God's power, not our own yeah. will. Uh, or right. we, you know, we, we simply cannot think our way out of this one. I mean, we mm-hmm. really need the mind and the power and the will of God to get us through this. So, um, mm-hmm. again, listeners, you can go to Dana's blog and you can read helpful, uh, um, kind of first person struggle comments and thoughts from, from her on this issue to, to get support. Uh, and you can dialogue with her through, uh, you know, through her blog to, to get more questions answered and, and just have know that you have somebody who, who gets it and is there to help you. So uh, mm-hmm. once again, head on over to hopelesslydevotedtofood.com. Uh, Dana Ramazowski is uh, the one who you need to, to uh, find out more from in, in those terms. That's D-A-N-A, Dana. And then Ramazowski is M- I'm sorry, R-E-M-I-S-O-V-S-K-Y. And uh, mm-hmm. Hopelessly Devoted to Food, check out her blog and, uh, and, and get some help from her but most of all we want to leave you with this thought of the answer is not the name of a diet although those can be helpful the answer is not knowledge uh, in and of itself the answer is not willpower the answer is Jesus Mm -hmm. and the answer is going to God and getting 
uh, connecting to him each day and just um, saying I'm hopelessly devoted to something other than you God and so in my hopelessness I give you this issue and I'm asking for help because I can't do it on my own so mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. are, are there words of encouragement, Dana, as we close that you just might want to tell someone, man or a woman who's listening today? Yeah, I think I would like to go back to those scriptures about being fearfully and wonderfully made, okay. just reminding yourself that it's your, more importantly, your heart than what you look like on, on the outside. Mm -hmm. And um, just never give up with God. We always have hope, even though we may feel hopeless at times. I know I've felt that way many times over the years, but I do just encourage you to press into God and His Word, and I, I've seen and experienced miraculous results. Sure. So I know that I'm, I'm praying for you too. So Fearfully and Wonderful Made is, I think it's Psalm 139, right? Yeah. And yeah. then the other mm -hmm. one is, I think, First Samuel is where the God yeah. looks at the heart and man looks at the outward right. appearance and in right, the book right. of first samuel you'll find i'm not sure exactly what it is but you can actually google google these things if you just in google put uh bible and then um god looks at heart i mean and you'll be able to find mm -hmm. that or you know uh, psalm 139 you can go to biblegateway.com or lots of different places where you can find uh the scripture there online if you don't have your own Bible. Um, so Dana, thank you again, my friend, for uh, <laughs> meeting with me today on this podcast and for helping other people in this issue that we struggle with. And just the reminder that really the answer is God. We don't hear that enough. Mm -hmm. And we need to look at this as a spiritual issue. We need to pray about it and really go mm -hmm. to, to God about it. So Dana, again, thank you for being my guest today on the podcast. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for having me. I My pleasure. It. And a reminder to everyone today that there is still time left today in this 24 hour period to really live life. If this podcast has been helpful for you and you haven't already subscribed, just uh, just go to the subscribe button that you'll see on the page and subscribe. That way you'll make sure that you get everything that I put on the podcast the moment that it's available. And if it's helpful for you, it probably would be helpful for someone that you know as well. If you could send them a link or tell them about the podcast and then also um, comment on the particular podcast where, wherever you're at. Rate it, if you will, and that will help others to be able to see and hear about the podcast.